Hi everybody, welcome to Bookham. I'm Amy Reed and I'd like to thank you for joining me today. Uh, I'm joining you from my backyard in New Jersey where I swore I wouldn't go outside today but it's not as hot and humid as I thought it was going to be and it's not as hot and humid as it's going to be tomorrow. I have my iced tea and I'm going to talk about all things libraries today. So thanks for joining us. The first thing I want to do today is talk about my um, series called The Libraries of the World Mystery Series. There's only one book in the series so far, but I'm about halfway th uh, done with number two, and I have planned a third book in the series. There may be a fourth one, but I haven't decided yet. Um, the first book in the series is called Trudy's Diary, and it is a, a contemporary mystery that alternate sort of with a mystery that took place back in the 1860s. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is read to you a little bit um, from the book and then I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the series and what's coming up. So in this in this book um, there's a an old diary and it is written by a young woman, a young bride from 1866, 1865, 1866, um, and it ties in, as the reader finds out, with a mystery that's taking place in contemporary Washington, D.C. So I'm just going to read a couple of entries from this diary, and the first one is June 29th, 1886, 1866, that's a Friday. I couldn't stand my curiosity any longer, and I asked Thomas about the picture I found in his bureau. When he found out I had seen the picture, he was angrier than I had ever seen him. He hit me across the face. He hit me so hard I fell. My cheek is swollen, and the bone around my eye is very painful. I don't know what to do. My father has never hit my mother, and I know my uncles don't hit my aunts. I cannot tell my parents, because I don't know what Papa would do to Thomas. And I am embarrassed to tell them, because I don't want them to think I have made a mistake in marrying Thomas. Perhaps it is good that I do not live very close to them, because they will not see the bruise on my face. And it's signed T. T is uh, Trudy. It's short for Gertrude. And she is the main character in the historical part of the, uh, part of the book. The next entry is June 30th, 1866, Saturday. When I went to bed last night, Thomas apologized for hitting me. I purposely waited to go into the bedroom until I thought he was asleep, but he was waiting for me. He put his hand lightly on my cheek in the way he did before we were married and insisted that I have relations with him so he could prove how sorry he was. I could barely endure it. This morning, when Lady and Jessie, those are Thomas's children from a prior marriage, saw, when Lady and Jessie saw my face, Lady gave me a hug. I could tell Jessie wanted to, but something held him back. They didn't say anything during breakfast, but they hurried outside while I cleaned the kitchen and did, and did my morning chores. I watched them out the window and they keep looking back toward the house. Their heads are together and they are talking. I don't know where Thomas is. When I finished my housework, I called the children inside so we, would work, we could work on their letters. They work so hard. Jessie seems to be grasping the concept of reading and writing a bit faster than Lady, but she will catch up to him, I am sure. When they came back inside, I knew they were bursting to ask about the bruise on my face. I checked it in the glass and it is deep purple and my eye is partly swollen shut. I can't very well hide it from them. They didn't say anything, though. They were even more assiduous than usual in their recitations. I think they wanted to please me. When Thomas came inside for the noon meal, he was grim-faced and angry. He didn't say anything except to announce that he would be home late in the evening and to have supper without him. He didn't say goodbye when he left, and he scarcely spared the children a glance. They looked down at their food during their meal as if they knew not to bother him in such a mood. They seemed almost relieved to hear that he will not be home until late this evening. I am getting a feeling they have seen this behavior from him before. So the Libraries of the World Mystery Series is a series of books set in and around libraries um, and it, it, very famous libraries. Like the first one is the Library of Congress and Tudor, Trudy's Diary. In the second book, it's the New York City Public Library. In the third one, it's a library in England. Um, so in each of the books, there's a special library collection that is particular to that, that library that is used to either commit or solve the crime. Um, in Trudy's diary, the main character in the present, whose name is Daisy, 
she uses a collection called the Dime Novel Collection in the Library of Congress to solve the mystery of, to, to help her solve the mystery of what's going on in her life currently and what happened in the past um, with Trudy and her family. Um, the second book in the in the series called Dutch Treat involves um, the New York City Public Library as I said it's the famous one on Fifth Avenue and 42nd Street with the lions um, and Daisy travels to New York City in that one uh, to be an assistant uh, an associate professor um, while, in, while in, a full-time professor is off on maternity leave and while she's there there is a murder and it involves um, uh, the job she has at the college where she is and <clears throat> she finds an old map dating back centuries uh, to when New York City was called New Amsterdam and so each of the books in this series sort of combines a present um, tragedy with something that had happened in the past. The book uh, book three doesn't have a name yet but it will take place in the Hereford Cathedral Chained Library, which is in England, and Hereford Cathedral is this beautiful, beautiful uh, place, and it has this library attached to it. And of course, now um, the library is much bigger, and it's and and the the parts of the library that are most used are housed in another building. But the Chained Library is still there, and religious scholars used to use that library uh, very often, and. The reason it's called the Chained Library is because it was, uh, there are some very valuable, very uh, unique old manuscripts that are placed inside each shelf and held there with chains so they can't be stolen. Um, it's a really interesting place. I'm looking forward to writing that book and I'm really enjoying um, writing Dutch Treat right now and I, and I loved writing Trudy's Diary. Um, and. It especially loves, it allows me to explore uh, libraries, and I love libraries, so I, I'm hoping to share my love of libraries through the series. Um, next, I'm gonna talk about what I'm reading now, happens to be a library book, and I am gonna talk more about local libraries. The book I'm reading right now is one I borrowed from the library and it's for my book club and we meet next Friday night to discuss the book. Uh, it's called Beneath a Starlit, Scarlet Sky. I'm not sure if you can, I don't know, when I look at this it's all backwards, but anyways it's called Beneath a, Star, a Scarlet Sky and it's by Mark Sullivan. Um, it's a book about World War II and I, I tend to have to space out my books about World War II or reading books about World War II because I find them really heart-wrenching and very um, just draining to read. So once this one is done, it'll be a while before I read another one. Um, I am going to read just a little bit from the preface of this book. Um, if you've read the book, don't tell me the ending because as you can see, I have a bookmark here and it's only halfway through and I don't want to know the ending. Um, I do know that um, the main character in the novel because it's it's very closely based on a, on a true story. I know the main character lives, so that that part is important. But there's a lot there's a lot I don't know, so um, don't no spoilers no spoilers in the comments. Really, this grabbed me from the preface, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to read you the first few paragraphs of the preface. Uh, in early February 2006, I was 47 and at the lowest point of my life. My younger brother, who was also my best friend, had drunk himself to death the summer before. I'd written a novel no one liked, was embroiled in a business dispute, and stood on the brink of personal bankruptcy. Driving alone on a Mon Montana highway at dusk, I started thinking about my insurance policies and realized that I was, was worth much more to my family dead than alive. I contemplated driving into a freeway ab abutment. It was snowy and the light was low. No one would have attempted, uh, suspected suicide. But then in my mind's eye, I saw my wife and sons in the swirling snow and had a change of heart. When I pulled off the highway, I was shaking uncontrollably. On the verge of a breakdown, I bowed my head and begged God and the universe for help. I prayed for a story, something greater than myself, a project I could get lost in. 
Believe it or not, that very same evening, at a dinner party in Bozeman, Montana, of all places, I heard the snippets of an extraordinary untold tale of World War II with a 17-year-old Italian boy as its hero. So when a story starts that way, it just, it's gripping. Um, it's the story of Pino Lella, who, as the preface says, is 17 years old when the story starts. And he, um, he is, once, once his apartment building and his neighborhood are bombed in Milan during the Second World War, he goes to a place in the Alps and helps uh, Jews escape Italy into the free uh, neutral area of Switzerland. Um, so that's Beneath a, Star a Scarlet Sky. And like I said, it's a library book. I, I think it's really important to support authors uh, by buying their books. But I also think another great way to support authors is by getting their books from the library and sharing them like I am with you. Um, I know, you know, all the local libraries around here carry my books. Uh, and I'm so grateful because there's a lot of people who borrow those books from the library, who, who might not otherwise want to spend $15 on a paperback, or who maybe can't spend $15 on a paperback book, or 12 as, as the case may be, talking whatever. about the importance of libraries. And I am a huge library advocate, library proponent. I spend a lot of my time in libraries. Um, my kids, I took my kids to the library all the time. When they were growing up, my parents took me to the library all the time. When I was growing up, you know, some of my fondest memories are of, you know, when I was a little girl and we were allowed to take 10 books at a time out of the library and I'd go home with this huge stack of 10 books and read them, or my parents would read them to me and as soon as I was done, we'd head right back to the library and return those and get a new a new group of 10 out. And I tell you, it's, it's one of my, it's one of the best memories that I have. And, um, I, I hope libraries are here for many, many generations to come so other kids can have those same memories. Um, but anyways, I just, I just wanted you to see this library book, hear a little bit about it. You should go, you should go borrow this library book, uh, from your local library or buy it or whatever and read it because it's really breathtaking. Um, so I'll be back and we're going to talk about libraries again. As much as I would like to, I uh, cannot spend every cent that I make buying books. So that's a big part of the reason that libraries are so important to me is I can get, you know, I can have thousands and thousands of books at my fingertips for free uh, at a moment's notice. Um, so I always start from the premise that libraries are essential to a community and not just the kids, not just the adults, not just the students, but everybody, everybody in every age range with every interest. Um, and, you know, I think what a lot of people don't know is that very often library funding um, is based in part on participation in library programs. So for example, if a library has a program, um, I don't know, pick a topic about rock painting and 30 people come to that program, the library is able to prove to the state and local governments that their programming is really valuable to members of the community. Um, and funding tends to be better when libraries can prove that, that their programs are beneficial. Um, I worry now that we're in this pandemic and, and the economy is faltering, I worry that libraries are going to suffer when, when we come out of this, only because very often um, in times of financial crisis or a financial squeeze of some kind, um, libraries are among the first institutions to lose funding. Um, so I, you'll see me referring to my notes because I wrote down a lot of the, some of the things that our local library does. There were, I mean, there were so many I could never remember them all, so I had to write them down. Um, so I just want to share with you a couple of, a list of the things, uh, of some of the things that my library does. Um, and my, my county, Cape May County is structured so that there are a number of county libraries. And then in addition to that, some, uh, some of the towns nearby have their own city libraries or they're barrier islands near us. So, you know, a couple of the barrier islands have their own um, libraries that are not affiliated with the county system. 
Um, so I belong to a couple different libraries. Uh, I belong to the county library, I belong to a couple of the different city libraries or, or barrier island libraries. Um, so just, just as an example, um, my, my county library system offers uh, computer classes. They offer uh, computer usage times to people, uh, printers, internet. You know, there are families, and, and this is true everywhere, there are families who maybe can't afford a computer or can't afford a tablet or can't afford a smartphone for their kids. And the library is a great place for those people to go, and, and in particular students. Um, but anybody looking for any kind of information, if you can't afford um, access to that information in your own home, it's very likely that the public library will have the resources that you need to access that information. So, you know, there are kids who don't have computers at home, so they can go to the library after school, and if they need help with their homework, they can do it there. Um, but it's not just the computers and the internet. There are classes, lots of classes. I know, um, just to name a few, like our, our library before the world descended into darkness in, in March, um, there was an owl spotting class. There, was, there, are, there are a lot of bird watching classes because this is a very um, popular uh, corridor for bird watching where I live. Um, there are art classes, there are cooking classes, uh, let's see, there are writing classes, there are yoga, Zumba, different exercise classes, there are health classes from everyone from child uh, age to old age. There are um, people who can help you with your taxes during tax time, March and April of every year. There are, uh, what else, story times for the little kids. Um, there are foreign language classes. I know our one of our local libraries does a beginning French program. Uh, another one does a beginning Spanish program. Um, through the library, I'm learning Greek through their using their free Rosetta Stone subscription. So uh, that's been really useful to me. Um, there's a local library near here that does concerts. Um, they have. Uh, members of an orchestra come in and they do concerts for people who might not otherwise know what it's like to go to an orchestral concert or be able to afford tickets to one. Um, let's see, there's a bookmobile. The bookmobiles are huge because they go to people's homes or neighborhoods when maybe those people can't get to the library. Um, let's see, authors, uh, musicians, we've had a magician at our local library who is so much fun to watch. Um, and not just for kids. He's fun for everybody. Um, book clubs, uh, book challenges. There are author, you know, I've been to several talks where I've been featured as the speaker. Um, and it's great for authors. It's great for authors to be able to go into libraries and talk to people. It's great for authors to be able to get your books into libraries. Um, I don't usually use audiobooks, but I'm starting to get into that. I realized our um, our library has um, the free audiobook service that you can you can borrow library books on um, Audible or a similar um, platform and and just listen to those. Um, there are, I'm, I'm doing a collection of historical mysteries right now too, and I couldn't do the research for those historicals without the library, because a lot of the information isn't in books. Um, it's located in different documents and archives that they have only at the library. Um, so, I guess, what was one thing I did? One, oh, there was a library locally where I, um, attended some writing group, not classes, but it, it was just like a writing group where people would get together and share their writing. It turned out not to be what exactly what I was looking for because they were not sharing their own, um, they were not sharing their spontaneous writings. They were sharing um, writings that came from prompts which is not what I was looking for, but there are other groups that I intend to check out through the local library, uh, groups of writers. Um, so I guess the bottom line is, I want you to support your local library. Go to the programs that they offer. Um, 
count yourself among the people who attend so that the library can report that to the city government and the state government and to say, you know, hey, look, we got 50 people at this at this event. It was a great turnout. Um, another thing you can do, go to library book sales. Um, Friends of the library groups often have um, book sales. I know at one library here, they do it a couple times a year at least and you can get some fabulous books for 25 cents 50 cents a piece another thing you can do is um, share library social media posts share it among your friends share it on Instagram share it on Facebook share it on Twitter so that the library gets that much more um, social media exposure and coverage um, and you know use the library borrow the books and really take a look at what your local library has to offer because I think you'll find if you don't already spend a lot of time there that there are some really amazing programs that benefit lots and lots of people. So go to the library and enjoy. Thanks. Hi, I'm Veronica. Just book them. I'm Amy. Let's book them. Hey, this is Viviana. Just book them.